Hello everyone and welcome back to the finals of the Grand Chester being played in London, uh, the London Chess Classic. Uh, do not mistake it for the London Chess Classic FIDE Open because that's a different tournament and I forgot to mention in the previous video, well, I didn't forget, I just, uh, I, I thought about uh, mentioning it but uh, I don't know, maybe I thought that uh, pretty much everyone reads the description or, or something like that. But regardless, uh, the way this tournament now works is that first... Uh, uh, 11 is playing against the Ding and Magnus is playing against MVL. First they play two classical games, then they play two rapid games, and then they play four blitz games. And then they uh, play against each other. And, uh, well, you get six points for a win in the classical time format, so uh, winning in classical is just huge. You you get four points for winning in the rapid uh, section and only two points for winning in the blitz. So if, if you can get a win in the classical... Uh, that's just awesome. So we've seen the game yesterday between MVL and Magnus. It was a well, it was just a brutal game. Uh, no one should be, you know, forced to play positions like that, uh, if not voluntarily. Uh, and now we're gonna check out uh, Eleven versus uh, Ding. Uh, so without further ado, Eleven opens with D4, uh, with Knight to F6 by Ding, C4. Sorry about that. Uh, we have e6, knight to f3, and d5. So, again, the queen's gambit declined is on the board. We have knight to c3, and now c5. Uh, c captures on d5. We have knight captures on d5, and g3. Eleven now prepares to Vienketo his uh, light square bishop, and Ding uses this opportunity to pretty much trade everything. We have knight captures on c3, b captures, c captures on d4, c captures on d4, and now bishop to b4 check. Uh going for more trades so he can just castle to safety with uh, bishop to d2, bishop captures with queen captures and now b6, preparing to fianchetto the light square bishop so you can counter white's light square bishop with bishop to g2 by 11 and now bishop to b7. Uh, both players castle with castles castles and now uh, if you look at the look at the position uh, Ding can be very happy he pretty much well he definitely equalized with black uh, one thing white will have that black doesn't is uh, if, if for example f3 and e4 are played then white will have a huge uh, well uh, central control here so that that goes for him but other than that black should be fine black has a two to one advantage on the queen side which uh, which can be utilized uh, you know far along in the end game if we reach that so rook f to c1 by 11 not going rook a to c1 so obviously this rook is staying on the a file probably to push a4 a5 uh, with knight to d7 now preparing to bring the rook into the game and here uh, there are a couple of known moves rook to c2 is a known move which prepares uh, the doubling of rooks on the c file queen to c3 is a known move and a4 is a known move which makes sense as the rook is uh, on a1 uh, but here we have queen to d3 uh, the queen can now support the advancement of the pawn to e4, but also uh, it brings some poison to the position. For example, if black isn't careful, uh, if you play a slow move, something like a6, let's say, uh, then knight to g5 gives white huge advantage because you're already threatening mate. Uh, and you're threatening to pick up the bishop on b7. Uh, so black will have to capture the knight after bishop captures here. You attack the rook. Once the rook moves, you're going to pick up the a6 pawn. Or, uh, well, th there's no or. You're just going to pick up the pawn as well. And you will enjoy a much better position. As the light square bishop is now a monster. So, after queen to d3, which is a new move, uh, so as of move 14, we have a completely new game. Uh, we have knight to f6. Ding, Ding says, okay, I'm just defending the h7 pawn, so uh, you don't have any knight g5 tricks. We have knight to e5 by 11, and now bishop captures on g2. We have king captures and the queen to d5 with check. For the moment, not allowing e4, but 11 plays f3, and the next move he's going to play e4. We have rook a to c8, now offering a trade of rooks along the c file and e4 now. And here, after the queen moves, we have queen to b7. Uh, you can see that white now has great control of the center. Uh, so this is uh, the, the, the small plus that Levon has. We have queen to a3, now putting pressure on the a7 pawn. But also, uh, if, for example, the rook moves from, the, from f8 and if the queen no longer controls the, the 7th rank, Maybe the queen can infiltrate uh, black's position with queen e7, then maybe f7 can be a target. It's a, it's a good square for the queen. So h5 by Ding. He doesn't want to have any back rank issues once he develops the rook, so the king can now go to h7 if needed. With h4, white does the same. Now h3 will be a nice safety square for the white king. We have rook f to d8, and now 
uh, the e, the d4 pawn is under attack. So here uh, we have trades, we have rook captures here, or you could defend it with queen to b2, uh, but Levin decides to do it this way. Rook captures on c8, we have rook captures on c8, and rook to c1, offering a trade of uh, another pair of rooks. Uh, and here we have rook to c7, uh, preparing queen to c8 to create more pressure along the c file, but uh, also if... Uh, uh, white doesn't react, it's just a very useful piece to have on the 7th rank. We have rook to c3 by Levon, now he can also do the same, he can go queen c1 and have a lot of pressure along the c file. Queen to c8, now threatening to pick up the rook, and here is where we reach, well almost reach the position from the thumbnail. Here Levon can choose a... Uh, well, basically, a few different moves. Uh, well, first, let's let's check what happens if rook captures on c7. If rook captures and queen captures, then we've just uh, traded even more material. And now, let's say king f2. You want to get your king over here to, to not allow any checks along the second rank. And then you will basically have the black queen forced to stay on the seventh rank if you don't want to allow something like queen to e7. So here, black would go for a series of checks. Queen c2 check, king e3. Queen g2 now, uh, allowing queen to e7, and here uh, it's basically uh, a forced to draw after a, a, a long series of checks by black. Queen g1 check, king to d3, you're gonna go queen to f1 check, king c2, you're gonna try and hide but you will fail, queen e2 check, king goes to c3, queen e3 check, king goes to c4, and now queen back to e2 with check. And now, uh, whatever you do, let's say king b3, queen to e3 check, you're gonna go back, king c4, queen e2 check. Uh, if you try marching up the board, you could you you will very easily get checkmated if you if you get in the reach of the black pawns. Uh, so not something you want to do. So this uh, rook captures on c7 is possible, but uh, like the title suggests, uh, Levon chooses the absolute coolest way to 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 do the uh, to do what needs to be done. He plays queen captures on a7, and now uh, well obviously he's offering a, a whole rook to Ding. So uh, Ding can either choose to, to to grab the rook or queen rook captures queen. So let's see what happens if you just trade down. If rook captures queen and rook captures queen with check, we have king to h7 and here just a4. And uh, believe it or not, white has a completely winning endgame here. Uh, one such example will be, for example, if you go for rook captures on a4, you, you want to grab some pawns here. It will not work because now just knight captures on f7. Uh, and now after rook captures on d4, you're going to get rook h8 check, king g6, and now knight to e5 uh, is mate because the pawns uh, very conveniently prevent the black king from uh, going down the board. The knight covers f7. And the rook, of course, controls the h file, so the, the king has nowhere to go. So after this, king to h7 and a4, you can't really go pawn grabbing. Uh, you're going to have to play something else. g6 makes some room for the king. But now rook to c6. Again, uh, you cannot go after the pawn because white just repeats, uh, grabs the f7 pawn, and then black is just in trouble. So you're going to have to defend it. And now d5 is deadly because you will create a very strong pass pawn. Black cannot capture because the knight falls. If you go knight d7, the knight captures on f7. So let's say knight to e8, but then just d6, and white is completely winning here. Uh, this square is protected. This square is protected by the knight. You're just going to push it to, to victory. So, uh, that being said, after queen captures on a7, a very interesting move, uh, Ding just decided to capture the rook. So, rook captures on c3, uh, but now Levon gets queen captures on f7 with check. We have king to h7 and now queen to g6 check. We have king to g8, queen to f7 check, king to h7, queen g6 check, and king to g8. And it was in this position on move 28 that the players agreed to a draw uh, because Levon is down a rook and uh, there is no way to continue the attack with white. And if you're not careful, black will black only needs a move to consolidate and then you're you're just dead lost because you're down a whole rook. So uh, both of uh, both of the games in round one end in a draw. Uh, today they will uh, switch uh, piece colors, and then MVL will have the white pieces, and also Ding will have the white pieces. So we'll see wh what's uh, going to happen. It's not as wild as the game between uh, level, uh, MVL and uh, Magnus, but uh, that that was a night or so. Every every time uh, MVL plays the night of, it's just completely insane insane stuff. Uh, and here Levon chose uh, the, the appropriate way to treat the position. He was never in trouble. It, it was uh, always black who could make a mistake. So that, that's uh, what uh, uh, Levon was uh, hoping for. Uh, but in the end, like I said, you win six points. 
uh, for winning a classical game, but it also means you are down six points if your opponent uh, wins wins a classical game. So you don't want to uh, overstep, you know. So the the correct approach for Levin with the white pieces. We'll see how he does today with with the black pieces. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this game. Uh, so I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Philip Schweitzer, Steve Foster, and Irfan Hojic for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the uh, Grand Chess Tour Finals. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions. And when we finish with the current events in the world, we are starting our next big saga. Thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.